At the end of this video, you should be able to describe the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom. Chapter 4, Section 1, Bohr model of the hydrogen atom. The puzzle of the hydrogen atom spectrum was solved in 1913 by the Danish physicist Niels Bohr. He proposed a model of the hydrogen atom that linked the atom's electrons with photoemission. According to the model, the electron can circle the nucleus only in allowed paths, or orbits. When the electron is in one of these orbits, the atom has a definite, or fixed, energy. The electron, and therefore the hydrogen atom, is in its lowest energy state when it is in the orbit closest to the nucleus. This orbit is separated from the nucleus by a large empty space where the electron cannot exist. The energy of the electron is higher when it is in orbits that are successively farther from the nucleus. The electron orbits, or atomic energy levels, in Bohr's model can be compared to the rungs of a ladder. When you are standing on a ladder, your feet are on one rung or another. The amount of potential energy that you possess corresponds to standing on the first rung, the second rung, and so forth. Your energy cannot correspond to standing between two rungs because you cannot stand in midair. In the same way, an electron can be in one orbit or another, but not in between. How does Bohr's model of the hydrogen atom explain the observed spectral lines? While in an orbit, the electron can neither gain nor lose energy. It can, however, move to a higher energy orbit by gaining an amount of energy equal to the difference in energy between the higher energy orbit and the initial lower energy orbit. When a hydrogen atom is in an excited state, its electron is in a higher energy orbit. When the atom falls back from the excited state, the electron drops down to a lower energy orbit. In the process, a photon is admitted, emitted that has an energy equal to the energy difference between the initial higher energy orbit and the final lower energy orbit. Absorption and emission of radiation according to the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom is illustrated in figure 4-8 on page 96 of your text or on the screen now. The energy of each emitted photon corresponds to a particular frequency of emitted radiation according to E sub photon is equal to H nu. Based on the wavelengths of hydrogen's line emission spectrum, Bohr calculated the energies that an electron would have in an allowed energy level for the hydrogen atom. He then used these values to show mathematically how the various spectral series of hydrogen were produced. The Lyman spectral series, for example, was shown to be the result of electrons dropping from various higher energy levels to the ground state energy level. Bohr's calculated values agreed with experimentally observed values for the lines of each series. The origins of several of the series of lines in hydrogen's line emission spectrum are shown in figure 4-9 on page 97 of your text or on the screen now. The success of Bohr's model of the hydrogen atom in explaining observed spectral lines led many scientists to conclude that a similar model could be applied to all atoms. It was soon recognized, however, that Bohr's approach did not explain the spectra of atoms with more than one electron, nor did Bohr's theory explain the chemical behavior of atoms. In the late 19th century, Scientists observed that a characteristic lavender light was produced when a high-voltage electric current was passed through hydrogen gas. When the lavender light was sent through a narrow slit, then through a prism, it separated into distinct lines of different colors. In 1913, the Danish physicist Niels Bohr proposed a model of the hydrogen atom that explained atomic spectra. The Bohr model introduced the idea of quantized energy states for electrons in atoms. In the Bohr model, the electron moves in circular orbits about the nucleus. According to the model, the electron can circle the nucleus only in allowed paths or orbits. When the electron is in one of these orbits, the atom has a definite fixed energy. While in an orbit, the electron can move to a higher energy orbit by gaining an amount of energy equal to the difference in energy between the orbits. 
When a hydrogen atom is in an excited state, its electron is in a higher energy orbit. When the atom falls back from the excited state, the electron drops down to a lower energy orbit, and a photon is emitted. The emitted photon has an energy equal to the energy difference between the higher energy orbit and the lower energy orbit. Thomson discovered the electron and proposed the plum pudding model, where electrons are spread on the surface of a solid, positively charged sphere. The discovery of the electron showed that the atom is, in fact, divisible. Rutherford learned that atoms are mostly empty space with negative electrons scattered around a positive center. This model describes a central part in the atom, the nucleus. Bohr's model suggested that electrons move in orbits around the nucleus. Bohr was the first person to be able to explain why atoms could only give off or absorb energy in specific amounts. We now know that electrons are not solid particles that can orbit the nucleus like tiny planets around a sun. In the present model, electrons are found in regions of probability that are often shown as clouds that surround the nucleus at successively higher energy levels. At this point, you should be able to describe the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom.